This Let's Play was supported by these awesome hobby companies. Hello everybody, myself and Richard are going to be having a little game of Chain of Command and this is going to be an interesting scenario. We haven't done this one before, I don't believe. So can you explain what we're going to be doing? Yeah, I certainly can. Um, we've got a game here from the Blitzkrieg 1940 handbook. Uh, this handbook has got five new scenarios in there. And uh, this one is called a hasty defence, mm -hmm. which is an interesting one. The premise being that the German Blitzkrieg has surged through the area and the Allies, in this case, John's got a British force, are rushing in from both sides to try and pinch that off and block my passage. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do at the start of the game is I've got my patrol markers over here. Yep. And John, you're going to roll me four dice and that's going to determine where your patrol markers are. Okay. Four dice, one, two or three, and a marker's going to be over there. Four, five or six, it's going to be over there. John's got four patrol markers. Let's see where they end up. So, funnily enough, he's got two over there, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll have two over there. So, Pretty quite even interesting split. starting points. They've got to stay within, those ones over there have got to stay within 12 inches of each other during the patrol phase, and the same for those ones over there. Whereas I'm obviously going to be trying to bulldoze my way right through the centre. Yep. So, the first thing we do now is we roll a dice each for our false morale. Okay. I'll roll mine. I've rolled a one, pathetic. <laughs> My chaps aren't that, that enthusiastic, <laughs> but then neither are John's. Um, interesting forces today. John has got a British platoon, so he's got three sections, each commanded by a junior leader. Mm -hmm. He's then got the platoon headquarters, which is a lieutenant and a platoon sergeant, and a boy's anti-tank rifle and a two-inch mortar. And w uh, as support options, he's chosen a Vickers machine gun and an unreliable ally in the form of a French R35. We don't know how long he's going to stick around for, but let's wait and see. Um, the battle will be revealed as the battle goes on. I, on the other hand, have got a German force. Now, this isn't one of the best German forces. Um, this is the fourth wave. Mm -hmm. Nearly 50% of the guys in the 4th wave German division had actually fought in the First World War. And that's quite handy, because so had their kit. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, two, of my four squads, two of them have got the modern MG34, but two of them have got uh, the MG0815, which is a great big heavy thing, for one of the first light machine guns that the Germans developed in the First World War. Uh, they only fire with six dice, as opposed to the more rapid fire from the MG34. And we've also taken a machine gun team to support, but rather than the tripod mounted MG34, we've actually got an MG08, once again a bit of First World War kit that the fourth wave are using. But my favourite is my Panzer IV, which mm -hmm. is coming out to play and going to blow your houses down. Probably. Probably. <laughs> uh, and also a little sneaky chap here dressed in a French uniform. What could he be doing on my side? We will have to find out. Yep. But we're going to start off now with the patrol phase. Now, the side with the higher force morale goes first, uh -huh. uh, which of course is neither of us. <laughs> so we both roll the dice to see who goes first. I rolled a three. John's wrote a five. five, so he goes first. Now that's yep. probably important if you're trying to shut that gap. So, as we know, patrol markers move 12 inches, they ignore all sorts of terrain. This is a quick pre-battle phase, yep. which is going to tell us where our jump-off points are on the table. Mm -hmm. It's effectively showing us where our... You can know you're a, a, oh, a about a foot in. About a foot fine, in. Yep. Okay, so we'll just so, make sure yep. that. So, uh, uh, we are going to actually play through this and then we can see how we place our jump off points okay so you go first move one of your patrol markers right uh i definitely <coughs> feel the important part is going to be in this middle yeah. place here so i'm going to jump one right the way forward right, right forward 12 inches i'm going to counter that going forward 12 inches myself it's it's a race to the crossroad i'm going to lose it but the important thing for me is to try and get a toehold in the edge of the village yep and I'm going to chuck this one forward. All right, and I'm going forward again onto there. Okay. Uh, mm, let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out this one. I think it's going to go to the there. Okay. There. I'm going to push down as far as I can okay. into the village. 
And <coughs> this one over here is going to have to jump up and join it. Okay, and I'm following up here. My rear patrol markers are acting as a bit of a drag now. I need to get as far forward as I can. Right, now, it looks Boom. to me like we've come within 12 inches. So yep. those two there, my lead patrol marker and John's lead patrol marker are locked down because yep. they've come within 12 inches. So I'm not going to lock this one down. I'm going to start branching out into the outskirts of the village. All right. Uh, I'm going to keep these two. Mm -hmm. This one's now within 12 of this one, so it could do something as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm also <coughs> thinking of trying to shut this down really right. quick as well. So. Okay, well, as soon as you come within 12 inches of that, so anywhere in that sort of area, it's going to shut it down. Yep. <coughs> and staying within 12 of this, yep. it's going to bunch in between these right. houses. Okay, so we've locked down there. Yep. So we'll put these little shot markers on there to show that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what am I going to do next? Uh, well, it's got to be coming out from the back. I'm going to knock down a tree just for uh, effect <laughs> and <laughs> start moving out there. I am going to... I don't want to get within 12 of that and shut myself down just yet. No. So I'm going to throw <coughs> that out right. this way. Okay, and I'm pushing up with this one. I mmm no 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 no. Actually, I'm just going to lock you down there. I'm okay. going to lock you down. All right. So you've still got we've, we've both got one marker in the in the game at the moment. Yeah. The one patrol marker is still active. So as we can see, a very very quick stage. Yeah, I'm going to... You're going over there? Going over right. there. Right, okay. Well, in that case, what I'm going to do is whiz this one straight forward to here, lock it down, and that ends the patrol phase because I'm completely locked down. Yep. Now, the way we determine where our jump up points are is by using uh, the nearest two enemy uh, patrol markers and then that creates a bit of a triangle. Can I borrow your tape measure just yeah, so I can create that magical triangle effect? Right, so we can see there that we've got my two patrol markers are creating a triangle at the rear of John's. Yep. He has to put his jump off point inside that triangle, but in cover. Yeah. So the options he's got there are really along this fence or in the big house. Yep. Uh, so, uh, where do you want to go? The thing to remember is when you place these, you can deploy anywhere within six inches of it. Yeah. So, for example, if you put it in the house there, you could still deploy into the wall, but you could also deploy into the other parts of the house. I'm probably going mm. to put it in uh, up against the fence, right. but further back. Yeah, okay. Well, that actually is quite a nice one because it gives you an opportunity to deploy into yep. the road, into the farmyard. So, there's... There's the first one. Mm -hmm. If we did the same again with this one, we'd see that the jump off marker created by this would probably be back in the farmyard there. Yeah. Over here, we've got a line through there and a line through there, which we can see gives an option six inches back. You'd have an option of in the house, yep. back in the graveyard. Uh, if we chose this one, once again, we can see that. That would give you an option of in the orchard or back behind the war memorial. Mm -hmm. Um, so the choice is, but it's my turn now, you've gone first, yep. so it's my turn now. If I look at these, now this is quite an interesting one here, because that and that is giving me a result of that. So the jump off point generated by that one would be over here, right at the, my back line. If I choose this one, I've got a bit more of an option there. That would allow me to go back into the garden over here. And with these ones, that and that would allow me to go behind this uh, outhouse or, or in the outhouse. Yep. And this one here would be back in this garden again. Well, actually, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to be bold and put the first one down We'll put it behind that shed. Yep. Right. So where are you going to put your second one? Uh, well, I had plenty of options there. Mm. So you had, didn't you? Uh, I'm probably going to throw it in the orchard. Yeah, probably not a bad one. Oh, going behind the war memorial is tempting in a way, but it is a little bit out in the open if you want to go from there. As yep. it is, you can deploy into the cover of the garage. I'm going to put the other one fairly obviously back here mm -hmm. in the garden. 
And uh, where are you putting your last one? My last one was... Uh, you had an option, see, this an house option over or, here. The, or the graveyard. Yeah. Or in the road behind the house, of course. I'm probably going to put it just... Yeah, give you an option of both. One of the things to think about is you don't want to deploy them too far forward because losing a jump off point is a bad thing happening yep. on your force morale. So you don't want them hanging out in the open where the enemy can pinch them. Yeah. Um, I'm going to put my final one down. And actually, I'm going to have it deep here. Right at the back. Because it might be a good position for my machine gun just to sit down there and start hammering away without exposing itself too much. Yep. Right. Okay, so let's whip those patrol markers off. And we can actually get a pretty good view of what happened when our patrols met. Well, what happened was the Germans were advancing into the village and the British had started coming in on their side. But yep. what, one of the good things about the, the using the jump off points is it means that rather than all my forces lining up over here and all John's lining up over there, we are getting straight into the action at first point of contact, yep. which is good. Now, as I am attacking, because that's what I do in 1940, yep. I'm going to go first. Right. So, five command dice. Um, some of the German forces, the much better German forces, can, can acquire a red command dice, which gives them a bit of a command boost. I can't. I'm just not that good. Fourth wave troops. But, so what have we got? We've got a five, which I put one on my chain of command dice, so that's a bit of jam tomorrow. I've got a six. One six is useless. No sixes or one six means the next phase is John's. Um, two sixes would mean the next phase is mine. Three sixes ends a turn. Uh, I've got a four, a three, and a two. Well, that's quite nice. Four, three, two. Two is a squad. Um, a three is a junior leader. Uh, and his squad, and a four is a senior leader. What do I want to bring on first? Mm. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to bring on a junior leader and his squad, and I'm going to get one of the ones with the MG34, and we're going to deploy them here. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's my machine gun team, and there's my rifle team. You've got to stay within six inches of that, so some of them can't get to the front. Uh, and there's the junior leader. And what we're going to do is, because the junior leader's there with him, he's going to put, use one command initiative to put the uh, machine gun on overwatch. Mm -hmm. And that little overwatch marker shows us the 90 degree of frontal fire that he's got. Yep. So if John moves anybody on the road, we can shoot down at them or over that way. And we might as well use the other one just to put those riflemen covering, because... I know where John's patrol markers are because my patrol said we saw some British over at the big farmhouse. Yep. We saw some British in the orchard. I'm going to use the other overwatch marker to cover in that general direction so I can respond and react. Mm -hmm. A two uh, is another squad if I want. Well, let's go for it because I'm trying to attack as brutally as possible. Um, <laughs> But I'm, uh, but I'm going to be slightly cowardly and hide behind this big building at this space, <laughs> ready to make my dash down the road. And a four, do I want a four on? No, I don't at the moment. I'm not bringing any of my senior leaders on. So that's my phase. I whip my <coughs> dice out, and John goes with his five command dice. Oh, right. Let's see what we can do. Uh, eh. Oh, lot of options. That's a, that's a horrible roll, in a way. That's four, too three, much. three senior leaders. It's far too early in the game to yeah, be thinking yeah. about bringing on senior leaders. But you have got two junior leaders. Now, for Ooh. example, your tank commander is a junior leader. Yeah. That's a slow old tank, that. It takes a bit of moving about. So you might want to think about bringing that on early. Yeah. Um, that The tanks, armoured vehicles, don't use jump off points because they don't just pop out, out out of nowhere, whereas infantry could well be lurking in the area. So tanks always use a road on your friendly edge. Now my friendly edge and road is pretty obvious, but John's got a choice. He's got two friendly edges, so you can yep. use either end of that <coughs> road. Mm. And I think because you've been mm. talking about this group here saying yeah. we've heard some British infantry, I yeah. think you were lied to, and I think it was actually... <laughs> you think it was a tonk? I think, I think it was a tonk that was sat back here making a lot of Fair noise. Fair enough, yeah. Playing the accordion. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it's a dreadfully French manner. Right, so that's the three, and mm -hmm. you could bring a section on with the other three, should you so wish. Yep, so with the other three, I, I'll bring the, mm. the leader and his section with yep. them, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, excellent. So where would I want to put them right now is the important thing. Mm. 
I need to start thinking about flanking. Yeah. Getting in your way over here somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to take these guys yeah. and I think we're going to work our way up through okay. yeah. these houses. So One of the things to remember about houses is that where you've got windows, you actually have a 90 degree arc of fire out of them. And you can actually use the overwatch marker to measure that. So if you were to deploy in that house, for example, yep. that's the line of fire, the angle of fire you'd have coming out of that. Actually, I will. Oh, well. Wow. I will. Why not? I'll um I'll stick my brand team in yeah. the top well, floor there. <laughs> yeah. The other thing about windows is one window can be used by two riflemen or one weapons team. So you can put your brand team in the window. Yep. Uh, there's just one window on that side. If it was on the other side where there's two windows, you could have a brand team and a couple of riflemen out the other one. So, and do you want to put them on Overwatch? Actually, that's an interesting. I, I one. think I will. Put As you're the leader, so we'll put that Overwatch marker there. So if these guys decide to wander out of this side. Uh, into the into the lovely French countryside, although we are actually in Belgium, <laughs> um, uh, but it looks very similar to French countryside. Uh, then you can shoot them down yep. and spoil their walk. So okay, <coughs> so that's it. You're that's done. it. I, I can't do anything else. So. No, you could bring on your platoon sergeant or your leader, but what's the point? You, the time to bring them on is when things are going wrong yep. or you're about to launch a big attack. So yep. roll my dice. Stop talking, Clarky. Right, two fives, uh, and then we have got three, three, and a two. So I'm actually going to counter your tank by bringing on my tank, okay. and he's going on there, and he is going to, hmm. he's going to point his little gun at that building, but he is not aware that you're there. True. Uh, because he hasn't seen you enter that building, and he's not within 18 inches, he can't shoot at you, because yeah. he's just not aware that you're there. If you start shooting, he can. Yep. So I will actually, Put him on Overwatch. If you'd kindly pass me an Overwatch marker, as I seem to have used all mine. <laughs> right, okay. So, we'll pop that there. Um, <coughs> what else can I do? Right, I need to push down the road, so I'm going to use that three to move these guys. I really want to rush them across as quickly as possible, so I'm going to run with three dice. Okay. Not exactly quite as fast as I wanted there, but sufficient to get me out of that angle of fire from you. Yeah, true. Uh, in fact, I don't think from that window you can see them really. But Right, so we're heading down the road, and what we do, because they have run, is we add a shock marker to them. Yep. Now, one shock marker on each. However, that's a junior leader. He's got two command initiatives. He's used one to say, run! Yep. And he'll use the second one to take off one point of that shock. So it's not, it's a little bit of a disorganisation, but he's been able to avoid the worst of it. Now, with the other two, I'm going to bring on another squad. And actually, I'm going to put them in exactly the same place. Right, okay. This, uh, normally, I'm a bit circumspect about bringing all my troops on quite so rapidly yeah. but in this sort of blitzkrieg type scenario where I've got to make a dent in your defences I'm actually going to go for it right so that's the end of my phase right. your phase young man let's see if we can <coughs> do something slightly better this time shall we yeah good roll might be Woo! <laughs> well uh -huh. the good news is the next phase is yours as well so this yeah. is a bit of a bit of a bonus and you've ended the turn. Well, what does the turn ending mean? Well, it will mean that we take off all the Overwatch markers. Yep. Anybody going tactical is no longer tactical. Um, if there was any smoke on the table, we'd take the smoke off. If any buildings were unstable, yep. we'd roll to see if they collapsed. So, uh, but at this stage, this early stage, it simply means the turn ends and you get the next phase, really. Yep. So you've got a four senior leader and a one. A one is a team. Now, you could bring on the boys. Mm-hmm. You anti-tank rifle, you could bring on the two-inch mortar, you could bring on the Vickers, or you could, for example, just activate one team. So if you wanted to fire the Bren, if you have a target, you yeah. could do. Although, probably, I don't. probably wouldn't be wise at the moment. No. Um, um, <coughs> I think I'll bring a team on, Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to bring the boys on. Okay, fine. Because Where are you going to put that? They, they now have something they can shoot at. They do, so. actually. I have a feeling I want to put them way out here. Yeah, I think you're right. Why don't you put them in the sort of 
attic window. Oh, you, you've got a flank yeah, shot could. on my... Uh... I absolutely could, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I told you that. Yeah, well. <laughs> yeah whip it off. Let's get that. Right, so I'm going to move this way off to the side here so it's okay. out of the way. Yeah, great idea. I think the boys... Now, the boys' anti-tank rifle is not a very good weapon. It has an anti-tank strike of one, but it's got a pretty long range. It's still um, it's still capable, so kind of. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, what it's more <coughs> likely to do is to knock holes in me rather than blow, it, blow the tank up. Yep. So let's have a look at what range we're looking at there. You're going to need 2d6 to hit. Now, it's the target's absolutely in the open, yeah. which means you would normally need to roll a five. Uh, but here we go with a British anti-tank rifle. And, uh, yep, yeah, so it's got a strike, an armour-piercing strike, I apologise, of two, not two. one. So it's slightly better, but it's still not going to blow me up, but it might have some effect. So roll 2d6 to see if you hit. Right. Move. It's just five required. It's uh, It's got a decent range. It, and whilst it doesn't have, to have a lot of penetration... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, what a shame. That was really unlucky, John. It was, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it? Whilst it doesn't have a, a lot of penetration, it's got a better range than a Panzerfaust. Yeah. So uh, it's not a bad uh, thing to have. And to be honest with you, hitting my flank armour... It could start rattling the crew, which is uh, start making you think a little. It um, it's you're just as likely to kill a tank by getting the crew to bail out because yep. they don't like what's happening. Right? Yep. Okay. Fine. So, um, I would be able to shoot at that, but actually, I'd, I don't think I can see that window. I really aim to cover that, so yep. the water towers in the way, um, so I can't react to that. Anything else you want to do? Uh, what are my options here? You've got a senior leader on yep. the four. Probably not. So just no. roll your dice again because it's your phase again. But yep. what we do do is we take off all the Overwatch markers because that end of a phase represents a significant break. So a lulling concentration. Nobody's on Overwatch. Nobody. If anybody was on tactical, that would go as well. Yep. So roll the dice to start the next turn. <clears throat> okay, this great hand. A, a very... really good hand. That is a hand you can do a lot with. Yep, this is the versus three. <clears throat> the three is a junior leader. Yep. Uh, the two twos, or three twos, are all sections, and the one is a team. But of course, you can add things up. You know, if you wanted to make a senior leader, you could do it like that, yep. or like that. Or if you wanted to make another junior leader, you could do it like that. So there's lots of options with that, that role. I think I'm going <clears> to <throat> play it as it sits. I'm going to okay. bring. Well, I'm going to bring two sections on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring another team on. Might as well have another go. Well, you could bring another team on, or you could have another go with the boys, couldn't uh, you? I could, I could do that, or there is a Vickers. Oh, there's a Vickers, yeah. yeah. Which needs to do something soon. Yeah, true right, enough. Right, let's, let's talk about sections anyway, and let's, let's right. have a look at where we want to go. So, okay. where am I currently? I'm thinking some more reinforcements up here, maybe, to try and draw your attention. Yeah. Or something down in the orchard, I have a feeling. The orchard might be a good spot. Good blocking position. If I run down that road, at least you've got somebody ready. If you used a three for that, you could put them in there and put them on Overwatch. Yeah. Which might be better than using a two. Yeah. It just depends whether you want that three for the tank or whatever. Because mm. the, those twos are only letting mm. me bring on the section, the section, so they the don't. rifle section, but not the not the brand team with it. Uh, yeah, no, it bring you can bring the whole section on, so the rifle team and the brand team, just not the and the junior leader. Right, okay. But he can't do anything. He can't do anything clever, like yeah. put them on Overwatch being the primary one. Okay, right then. So then this section is going to mm -hmm. come on. I think since nobody's on Overwatch, yeah, and I can move six inches, yeah. I'm probably, or deploy six inches, mm. I'm probably going to try and get into this garage. Okay. Because the garage has windows. It does. So <laughs> and probably spanners and oil. <laughs> I'm not too worried about the spanners <laughs> and the oil, but, you know. But the windows are appealing. The That's windows, good, good the windows are, are a good, right. good thing to remember. Okay. I don't want to start chucking things around. Right, the, tea, the tree destroyer. <coughs> the tree. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So that's what have you used there? That's that. That was a two. That was a two. Yep. So you got loads left. I've got another two, which. Yeah. Uh, heck. I've got to keep you interested in some location, or I've got to block you. Mm. 
so I think over here this time, I okay. think in this area here, I'm going to bring another section in and start moving them okay. across yeah. the way. Yeah, so I there can get are, in here. Yeah. Right, so another section, we're using another two to do that. Okay. So, so that's, we'll take the two out of there, so yep. it serves as an aid memoir. The thing that you need to be careful of is uh, not to start picking up your command dice and rolling them when you fire and then going, oh, I've no idea what I've got left. <laughs> uh, because that uh, ends your turn pretty effectively. Yeah. Okay. So this section is now going to... So those guys are getting ready to run down the road. Yep. And that's on a two, so again, they're not on Overwatch, but you're, tr you're looking like you're shutting that gap down to stop me bursting through the middle. I've got, to, I've got to give you a decent fight, I think. You are. That's <coughs> exactly what it's about. Right. No, I have another two. Yeah. But I have no more sections. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that's called unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can bring a team on. Yeah, you which... could. Well, you or you could uh, you could activate the tank on the th turn the one and the two into a three and activate the tank, or you could bring use the one to bring the one of your teams on the two-inch mortar, the vickers, yeah. or activate the boys to fire again if you mm -hmm. prefer. Whatever you prefer. The great thing about the command dice is you get to choose what you think is most important in a turn. It's not telling you do that or yep. activate this unit or that <clears throat> unit. It's your choice. And how you put them together is the command challenge. I think I'm going to have another shot with the boys. I think that sounds the most things. fun thing it to does. do. If it nothing does. else, that's fun. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Roll those two dice. See if you can manage a five this time, John. No. Yeah, hurrah, well done, okay, so <laughs> good good shot. Um, now, you've got a striker two, so yep. roll two dice, fives or sixes are penetrating hits. Oh, so these first two dice uh, are added up? They're, at, they're added up right, okay, to, see, to see if you've hit the target. You've hit the target, now we see you, we roll your two strike dice for penetration. Fives and sixes, <laughs> right, okay. You haven't actually penetrated my armour. My armour <coughs> is uh, four. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna roll four dice. See if I yeah I bounce that completely. Yeah, that's that's fine. Even if it had been if it had been equal, if I'd rolled no saves, you can still have a morale effect on me. Yeah. Um, which one of which is making me go right? I'm not having that, and I start firing back at you. So it's not always the one you want. <laughs> right. So you got a three and a two. I think we'll activate the, the tank next. Ah. I think Why it, not? It needs, right. Now you got a choice moving. with a tonk. You can roll one d six and fire the main gun. Yep. You can roll two d six to move and fire uh, the machine gun, uh, or you can roll 3d6 and not fire anything. And you're a slow tank, so you don't add anything to that. Yep. I'm going to throw 3d6 and just move. Yeah, I think that's probably We just, right just need to, to get moving. Yeah, yeah so. it's a slow old thing, that one. Not that slow today, however. Right, <laughs> 15. Speedy. It's the French Blitzkrieg. It's... Uh, Oh, but, but we needed to check if they remained, didn't we? Because uh, they're yeah. unreliable allies. They are. We, I knew there was something happened on an end of turn that we were forgetting. Roll me 1d6. Now, John could choose to spend a whole chain of command dice to avoid rolling this test with mm. an unreliable ally, but he hasn't got a chain of command dice, so the rolling the end of the turn could be fatal. Roll could me be. a d6 and see what happens. No, the French are not that unreliable. They are staying to play, so 15 inches is how far they go. Can I make a turn at any point in you this? You can make or? a turn at any point in that. Uh, if you're making a 90 degree turn, you should take a dice off. Yeah. But you're not, you're just, you know. Screw it, I'm just gonna <clears throat> yeah. run forward. Yeah. I think that'll do. Fair enough, and actually, there's a great big water tower in the way, so I can't see you, yeah. so that's a pretty good position to be in. <laughs> okay, and you would have two left. Are you which doing anything? You've kind of done, aren't you? Yeah, I'm done. Right, okay. In which case, take your command dice away and I will deploy my ones. A six says the next phase is yours. A five puts a point on my chain of command dice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Three, two, one uh, is a nice roll. Um, I'm going to think long and hard. You go moving into that garage is a bit of a nasty one because it... Um, Stops me going in there. Um, okay, I've got to think about this because you, you, you're, you're getting there fastest with the mostest, and I'm not. <laughs> um, right. What we're going to do is we're going to jump over there. Okay. And we're going to 
get into that garden. Now, the way we do that is we roll 2d6 and we take the lower number off. So that's four inches. So these guys are going to go four inches and get in the garden. Um, I actually don't think the machine gun team quite make it, so they're going to uh, cluster around the magic bush, <laughs> ready uh, to fire if they can. Uh, the heat's also going to take off that one point of shock as well, otherwise we would have lost an inch of movement. Yep. So that is the three. I've got a two and a one. <clears throat> I'm going to get the tank in action because I think the tank is the ace up my sleeve, yep. or in this case, on the table. <laughs> so uh, we're going to drive like the wind and go 13 inches, not quite as fast as you're a blitzkrieg you move, but, uh, but we, being an average tank, add one inch per pip, mm -hmm. uh, per dice. So that ends up going 16. I'm finding myself actually with the tank being sucked into into the centre of the action, whereas my original plan was to stand back and shell everything that moved, but yep. it's not quite happening. I don't really like that boys up there, so I'm I'm in a good position there. But that's the end of my phase, so your phase now. Right. <clears throat> that's another tree there. goes. Another no. tree goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's alright. Oh, that's another fabulous hand. Yeah. Three, two, two, one, one. Again, mm -hmm. almost anything can be made out of that hand. That yeah. is a really nice roll. Mm. I'm going to activate these guys over here, I think. Uh, we're going to get these guys into this building. Okay, right. To go into a building, you roll 2d6, just like an obstacle, 2d6, and take the lower one off. So five inches, so you can get right the way into that house. Yep, so that can. But that takes your whole move, so you won't be able to fire. So... You, you're on the ground floor, but we'll just pop them in the building. Don't yep. you can take the floors out, but it is extraordinarily boring watching people take floors out of buildings. <laughs> so we'll just put them on the top floor and know that they're on the bottom. So um, <clears throat> now, what you, you whilst you can't fire because you've you've used um, you know all your energies up moving. Yep. That junior leader has got a spare command initiative. So what you can do is chuck a hand grenade uh, out the window. Well, that will be fun. Uh, well, it that certainly sounds, will like uh, wake my blokes up. So, uh, <laughs> roll me 2d6. All right. If you roll a two ones, you will fumble and drop it on the floor. Otherwise, there's not a lot that's going to stop you tossing it out of a window. Well, there's right. a three and a six. If, if I was throwing a grenade into your window and it exploded inside the house, it would count as three dice yep. uh, because it's in a confined area. I'm not in a confined area, so it's only two dice. But they do count as a target in the open. The other thing is, right, so uh, we're going to split the hits, one on the rifles and one on the machine gun. One mm -hmm. on the rifles, nothing. One on the machine gun, one point of shot. Right. So it blows up pretty harmlessly, but it, uh, it does give me a bit of a shot, which is <laughs> as good as you can expect, I guess. Right, so yep. that was on a three? Yep. Right, you've got plenty left. What are you going to do now? <laughs> so it's how how ballsy do I want to be well, here because yeah. <laughs> there's a Panzer IV sat in the edge of yeah. the village now and I'm, yeah. I'm wondering what the hell I'm supposed to do with that. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is rather the elephant in the room. It's quite very much so yeah. the elephant in the room. Mm. The only German tank to serve throughout the whole war. Yep, from start to finish. A very, very different Panzer IV now to in 1944. This has only got 30 mil armor with, yep. a, with a little bit of added stuff but yeah uh, mm. i could just throw the tank at it while the tank is still on the table mm. and still fighting for me i may mm. as well just throw them at yeah it. that's true actually because with an unreliable ally you might as well get them killed <laughs> 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 or, and in, in a valiant glorious charge yep so his movement then mm. he could yeah not really draw a line even if he no, came off road he's got here. a fair way to go hasn't he but yep. it's a big threat you can roll you could you can uh <clears throat> you can turn and go 2d6 that would be your full move yeah um but <clears throat> but it would put you in a position to to do some damage next turn i guess that's the issue isn't it yeah, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to roll mm. 2d6, yeah. and if I have a machine yeah. gun shot, I can take it. Yeah, then, that's fair so. comment. Right, away you go. Roll right, 2d6. So 2d6. Yeah. 
Nine. Nine, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah. So, so. <coughs> Where are you going to go? Well, push it, rather than do a 90 degree turn, just sort of push it in that area yep. and you'll get a shot through, won't you? I'll get them to there. Yeah. So what, nine? Yeah. Did we say? Yeah, nine yeah. gets them to there. So in a gentle turn that way. Yeah, that's fine. And then he can go rat-a-tat-tat uh, with six dice. Onto these Yeah, guys. onto those guys. Yep. Why not? Right. So. Six dice. Okay, so fours, fives and sixes. Three hits. Yep. I actually don't think you can see the rifle team, so we're going to put it all on the machine gun team, mm. which, which might be... Um, I wish I hadn't said that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, never mind, it's fine. It's only one point of shock. I, could, I was just about to see me roll three sixes there, mm -hmm. mow them down. However, I didn't. So you used a three for that, so yep. that must have been a two and a one. So you've got a two and a one left. Yep. Uh... The anti-tank rifle can't see anything, thank goodness. I think I need to activate him and get him moving. Yeah. Um, so he's currently hiding up there. Yeah. Right, if he's upstairs, mm -hmm. to go downstairs, you can take the whole turn to go downstairs and relocate anywhere within six inches. So he could go downstairs and come out into the yard, for example. Yeah. That would be one option. I think he'll do that. I think we'll just do that. Down and then he can move six inches away from the building, is that? Well, uh, in, technically he goes yeah. downstairs and moves six inches within the building, so yeah. he could go from this side to the other side, but you might as well just put him by a door or whatever. So he's done that, he's downstairs. Yep. Right, we know that. Okay, so and then the last thing is a two that I have to use, I think. Right, yeah, that's it. So that would be a section. So, unless Don't. you want to move one of the existing sections. Um, uh, like the buoys in the garage, you can yeah. get them to go. So they are. Um, that roof does come off, but yeah. let me do it because if anybody's going to break it, I'd rather it was me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, uh, the, it sticks a bit where I painted it. Let's yeah. take these roofs off and we can have a roof collection. Right. So they can go one d six and fire at half effect, mm -hmm. or probably in that situation you're going to have to go two d six, aren't you? Really to get to take up position. Yeah, and that will get you to the so roll a couple of dice and that will be all your movement but at least you're in firing position for next time so yeah that was the right thing to do so in they go and you can get two men or a weapons team per window so put the Bren in one and yep. a couple of riflemen in the other so the Bren will be in there and actually you, there is a room there so you could have two men two men two men and the Bren so that's pretty much everybody isn't it Yep. That's a very good building to as a fire position. <laughs> it's also well, it's a concrete prefab building, so it's pretty good cover. Right. So that's everybody in there now. Right. So that's the end of your phase. That is. So let's get rid of these evil British command dice and put my nice Nazi dice on. Right. Six means it's your phase. Four, four, three, and two. Um... Hmm. Four. I think I'm kind of forced to bring down a senior leader at this point to get things happening because yep. <clears throat> nobody's making things happen. Well, I mean, right. your your Panzer IV has a, a thing it can do now, so... Yeah, it does. It I'm has a gonna, couple of things. I'm going to bring the leader on here within sixes, six inches of that jump-off point, mm -hmm. and he's going to shout to them, move. So they are going to cross the fence. So we take the lower one off. The so they inches. move six inches. Yep. They are exposing themselves in the open a bit. But uh, something's got to be done. And the thing that's going to be done is... I'm going to blow your house down with my tank in a moment. Okay. Right, that's the four. He... The senior leader has got three actions that he can use. He's going to use one to tell them to do that. Yep. He's going to use the second one to shout to these guys and tell them to move 1d6. Hooray, they've managed to move six inches, which is great, because they're going to take up a firing position and fire on your Bren team in that window. Yep. Um, and moving six inches is brilliant, because it gets me quite a lot of men in the line of sight. So. Mm -hmm. This is one of the old First World War machine guns, so they're going to fire with six dice seven, and another six riflemen. So we're going to fire 12 dice, but that's halved because we've moved um, with 1d6. So six dice 
and what's our range i think we should just be within 18 we are fours fives and sixes i've got four hits and that's only on the Bren team because that's yeah. the only team i can see so would you care to roll me four dice please i will try and roll four dice <laughs> and try not to kill everybody right and in fact you've killed nobody you're in hard cover that's not even any shock yep. in hard cover five shock six kill but nothing there but <clears throat> there we go got to do something right now and he's got a third point that he can use a uh, third command point um, with which he is going to tell these guys to move with 2d6 to behind the tank so these guys move six inches really just trying to get out of the fire from your tank mm -hmm. um, not very successfully unfortunately <laughs> um, right now with the three I'm going to fire at the house right um, because we've seen grenades come piling out so six dice it's a low velocity 75 mil gun six dice um, needing fours fives and sixes to hit three hits now um, <clears throat> You're in hard cover, but high explosive tank guns reduce cover by one, so yep. you count as light cover. You've got two teams in there. Now, if you were in the open, I would choose where the odd hit went, the third hit, but because you're in cover, you choose, so you're probably going to put two on the rifle team and one on the Bren, aren't you? Yeah. So roll me two dice for the hits on the rifle team, please. Uh, yeah. That is a four and a one, yep. uh, which is one point of shock. And roll me one dice for the Bren team, please. One as well. Okay. Now, however, interestingly, firing high explosives at buildings and rolling three sixes has another effect. Of course it does. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which <clears throat> is that uh, the building um, becomes unstable. Great. <laughs> so you will need to abandon that building before the end of the turn or the chances are it might collapse on top of you. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so uh, that's um, uh, something that best is best avoided, I find, mm. buildings collapsing on you. Right, so I've got another four, which is a senior leader, and I've got a two. Um, and um, actually, this the gunner has got two command initiatives so he's had the main gun fire yep. but he's also going to get the hull gun to fire all right this is six dice uh but it is um not reducing cover nevertheless another four hits yeah. so if you could roll two and two hard cover again so two on the so one dead on the machine gun team and one point of shot yeah Ooh, so, nasty not and so good two on the and that's no effect on the other people. So let's roll a dice to see, is it off the machine gun team or is it the leader? If we roll a one, it's going to be on the leader. It's not. So take one man off your machine gun team. Oh, yeah, so, this building, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So uh, they've lost a man, they're a bit shocked, and the building's about to collapse on them. I'm quite happy with that as, a, <coughs> as an immediate result. Yeah. <clears throat> right, okay, so that's the end of my phase, though. Uh, I'm... Uh, I'm running about like a headless chicken with my infantry, but I do think my tank's in a position to uh, to really cause some hurt. You're doing all right. <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, not. now that's... Mwah. You want chain of command dice. Yeah, I do. But you probably want to do things more than get amass those points at the moment. Yep. Nevertheless, add three points to your chain of command dice. Mm -hmm. You can activate a senior leader and activate a team. Now, this is one of those moments where it might be worth bringing a senior leader on. Remember, yeah. he's got a nine inch influence range. Uh, and I'm so think about where you place him because he, he could get quite a bit done. Yeah, I'm absolutely going to bring a, a senior mm. leader on though. Right, so probably bring on your platoon sergeant. So this guy, I think. That's the, that's the officer. Bring him, the officer. him on if you like. They're both, to be fair, they're both equally reliable chaps. I'll bring the, the officer on. Then. Right, okay. Uh, so he's going to be coming on at this location. Yeah, so he could definitely say to those blokes, get out the ass. Yeah, he doesn't need to move, does he? Because he's got... No, no, he, he's got a big, loud voice. Yep, so he'll shout at them to get out. Yeah, which is... Which uh, is going to make yeah. them... So 2d6, 2D6, and you take the lower one off to come out the house. So if they roll double one, for example, they don't Four. get out. But yeah, they're out on the road. Okay. So whip them out, put them on the road. 
a good decision there, definitely the right thing to do. I mean, that if that tank was going to stand there at close range and pulverise that house, <laughs> that was not a place to be no. staying. It's not friendly in no. there. No. So one shock on your rifle and one shock on the brain. I don't know. Yep. I can't see what you've got in there. Right, so that's one command initiative. He's got okay. two more. What's he, he going to do? two more. He... Mm. Uh, Hard to tell now because he's only got these two sections to, to yep. command. So, well, they're under fire. That brain's under fire. He could, they could respond. They could reply with that. He could send some riflemen downstairs to take the other two windows down there and get some more fire going. Yep. Will that will that cause him to do two orders then to make them to move down and then yeah fire. Yeah. So he'll he's essentially he do going that. to do yeah. that. Right. So the riflemen are going downstairs. We know that the Bren team six dice. Uh, so roll your six dice. Okay. And uh, good shooting. Three yep. hits. Yep. Switch I because I'm in cover. I'll put two on the rifle team, and uh, nothing. And one on the machine gun team. Nothing. Hooray. <laughs> um, uh, that's good for me. So you've still got a one left because you you've used his three command initiatives. Yep. So. So that's a team there. So that's a team, yeah. So it could be a Vickers, could be your two-inch mortar, could be your anti-tank rifle. It could be the Bren team there who might decide they want to... Well, there's no windows there now, so they don't have much of a shot. No, but you, you've got one there, and these guys are definitely in it. Going to bring on the Vickers team, I think. Ah, right, okay. So let's see where we want <coughs> We have plenty of options for them. You've got loads, actually. I mean, that jump-off point there could actually put them <laughs> down by the War Memorial and they could spray lead up the main street. And um, Exactly what they're going to do. That's a I deeply unkind move to make, John. <laughs> I'm well, saddened by your behaviour. <laughs> <laughs> right, roll me ten dice, please. All right. <laughs> Right. I was hoping to get him fire the Bren out the window. <laughs> Those two blokes, but he wasn't suckered into that one. Right, away you go. All right, okay. Uh, you've got a short range of 24 there, so yep. that's a bit of a bonus. So you've got fours, fives, and sixes again. Five hits on yep. the guys crossing the road. I'm in the open. I pre presume you're going to put three on the machine gun I team. would assume so, yeah. Uh, it's one dead on the machine gun team and nothing else. And on the rifle team... Because I'm in the open, fives kill. So that's three dead. That hurt. Let's roll the dice to see if it's a leader. It is. So that's two dead, one off each team. And he's dead. <laughs> right. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I've come all this way and see how I get treated. Right. <laughs> so let's roll for a force morale effect by throwing it in the box <laughs> rather than on the floor. Right, well that's one off my force morale. Excellent, okay, <laughs> fine. Well that was a good, good use of uh, a really bad hand, um, but it just shows the importance. Those fours, the senior leaders can yeah. really galvanize their force and get things happening. So let's see if I can do the same. Ooh, end of turn. Now what we won't forget is to roll for your tiny tonk. Oh, yes. You can't spend a chain of command dice because you haven't got one. Yep. So roll me a d6. We'll do that first. All right. Actually, we don't do that first. Let's do no. it at the end of the turn because okay. it might affect the way I decide to use the others. Not that I've got a lot. I've, got, I've just got a one. Um, and on that one, I'm going to fire my machine gun up okay. at that window. So I'll do that quickly. Yep, and then so we can do the fun bit of what, watching your French tank run away. <laughs> uh, so I've only got one hit on the Bren team. All right. So roll the dice for that, please. Uh, shock, point of shock. So yep, I'll, pop that, uh, I'll pop that on there like that so we can see. <laughs> it's upstairs. It's in the building. It's in there, right. Sorry. Okay, so roll the dice for your <clears throat> French tank. Unreliable allies. On a one or a two, he's going away. Oh, he's not as unreliable as I had hoped. <laughs> um, right, so the next phase is mine. Yep. Right, the start of the next turn. Anybody on Overwatch? No. Anybody? Nope. No. So none of those markers go, but we do test to see if the unreliable uh, oh, the building, building collapses. collapses yeah. <clears throat> but <clears throat> there's nobody in there, so 
that yeah, they've gone that's fine so five i've now got a full chain of command ice which is really handy to yep. have i've got two senior leader activations a three uh, which is a junior leader and a two which is a squad mm -hmm. you right. still have a fair amount of stuff hanging off the back there, i've got so. loads of stuff at the back mm. but uh i'm going to use my magic weapon my my dragon the tank to <laughs> to fire he down at your vickers because that vickers really upset me of course you are <laughs> <laughs> so let's roll the dice for that so i get three hits yep for that and <clears throat> do i do any damage let's take that three out because i've used it can you roll three dice please yep uh reduce cover you're in light cover but i've reduced that to the open because i'm firing he so fives and six kill, threes and fours a shock. Yep. One dead and two points of shock. So yep. let's pop two points of shock on there and take a man off. <clears throat> okay. So team of five on the Vickers, so not a lot of damage, but uh, enough to be started with. And then I'll fire my hull machine gun with six dice. I'm over 18, so I'm hitting on fives and sixes here. Two hits on yep. there. You're in light cover from that, so it's a... Uh, better roll uh still six is a man dead excellent news for me the three isn't a shock but uh we're whittling them down yeah. right what am i going to do next i've got a two i'll think about the two i'm going to use the four <clears throat> the senior leader's going to activate these guys who okay. are going to fire up at the house with his first command initiative and as we know that's 12 dice and we're gonna <clears throat> split the hits between the men downstairs and the men upstairs now one two three four five six hits so three on the brand yep. and three on the rifle please john if i All could right. ask you to so this is brand team, team. <clears throat> it's one shock yep so that's another shock up there that will reduce its firing dice by one yep <laughs> and the rifle and the rifles is one dead yep. and no shock. So okay. roll the dice to see if the dead is a rifleman or if it's the leader. Because we've lost one man dead, a roll of four. one would mean it's the leader. If it was three men dead, a roll of one, two or three would mean. Yeah, so, so it's, it's not. Four. So just take your rifleman off. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> with his second shout, the senior leader is going to say to these people, move. And they're going to move tactically with just one dice, four inches, which is actually them cowering in fear behind the citron. They're not afraid of the citron. It's the <laughs> Although, you, if you have a citron, you, you might know be, better. You might, be a, you might be afraid of a citron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're tactical. They're just trying to get as much cover as possible. This is my brilliant tactical move, is to cower behind an old car. While a um, tank is sat the other side yeah, of it. <laughs> yeah. um, these guys... Uh, we're going to advance down the road behind the tank, but the tank decided to stand still, so I'm not going to do anything with them. Yep. I have got enough to bring on another s squad if I want, but I, I've got a traffic jam of squads as it is. I'm not doing any more. I'm, I'm, I'm not doing any more. It's okay. all yours. Mate. All right. Do your worst. Oof. My worst so far hasn't been great. <laughs> Right, one six yeah. means the next phase is mine. And mm -hmm. not a bad hand. Uh, four, three, three, and two. Yep. You can't activate any individual teams, but so if you wanted to fire your Vickers, for example, not that you've really got anybody to fire at, apart from my senior leader, who I've left hanging out to dry. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you can't activate it. Mm. Um, so unless you bring a senior leader on. But what are you going to do? Senior leader, two sex, two junior leaders, and a squad. Uh -huh. I now just to give you a quick tip here, you yeah. could once again use his two command initiative to chuck two grenades out of that window if you could so do. wished. Could Each do. section has got three hand grenades. Uh, do you want to do that? No, I want to kill something with a tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh, that's a fair comment. Well, you can shoot at them or you can shoot at them. They're obviously... These guys, um, you can really only see a couple of blokes. Yeah, yeah. Those guys, you can see more, but they, they're in, they would count as being in light cover because they're tactical. Yeah. Uh, or you could move the tank. Or I could move... One dice and yep. then fire the machine gun. Yep. 
Right, that's probably no, your so best bet. One one dice with main gun? Uh, one dice, you can fire the main gun. Yeah. But to be honest with you, your machine gun's probably going to do more damage than a comedy three-pounder. Yeah, probably. 37mm, uh, <laughs> which uh, is fine for taking on other tanks. Ish. Ish. Or hitting people in cover. But when you've got them in, in relative open, yeah, maybe, because I'm tactical, the high explosive might do more 50-50. It is a bit. Uh, let's let's just, let's just do something silly. I think I think we'll just do something silly. <laughs> um, we'll go with d six. When in doubt, do something silly. Right? Yeah. Okay, that's a good motto. So three right, inches. Three inches. <laughs> clank, 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 clank. Very slow. Three inches. That's that's more like what I expect from an R thirty five. Yeah. Exactly. But okay, that's... now, uh, yeah, that's fine. If you are crossing an obstacle, what you do is you roll two dice okay. and you take the lower dice away, right. which would mean you can only fire your machine gun. It's not a bad thing. And if you get a double, you, you the fence gets caught in your running gear. <laughs> and uh, But just don't roll a, a double. It's, it's simple, really, isn't it? Just don't roll a double, he says. There you go. Almost a double. So don't roll a double. That's fine. <laughs> Three. <laughs> so... Okay. Crash, bang, the fence is destroyed. I am here to um, ruin your day. Le fence a destroy ed. <laughs> um, and uh, what you're gonna you got to fire the machine gun, haven't you? Yeah. Six dice, please. Yep. So I'll grab my six up here. Oh. Let's see if we can do any good with this thing. That's pretty good. Yep. Three hits. Yep. Right. I don't think the Citroen counts as hardcover. <laughs> Uh, okay, so three dice. Uh, I'm uh, I'm in the open, even though I'm tactical. So we'll put two on the machine gun, which is obvious. One dead on the machine gun, and one uh, no shock actually, because I'm tactical. So we'll take the we'll check to see if it's a leader. <coughs> though. Uh, although we can't, because he's already he, he's dead. already on con oh, he's, he's already dead. dead. Yeah. You can't get deaded twice. <laughs> so ugh, it's a man. Uh, okay, I didn't like that. What else are you doing? That's that was on a three, so we'll move that three over there. Yep. So you've got a four, a three, and a two. Uh, I think I'm going to have to activate <laughs> a senior leader. Yep. Uh, so this is your four. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell him to get this section mm -hmm. back here to move. Yep. Uh, they're basically going to run. Okay, so you can roll three dice. Yep. <clears throat> Ooh, 13. That's all right. So now, where are you going? <laughs> so yeah. 13 inches, you say? Yeah. yeah. 13 inches, you say? Uh, my God, you're going into close combat. Damn right. Okay, well, I'm using my chain of command dice to interrupt. All right. And as you run around the corner, I gun you down. Fair enough. Right, <laughs> so as they move, I'll roll my dice. I'm firing HE from the tank at them. Okay. So it might <laughs> not be... Uh, the best weapon to use, but let's give it a go. Right, go for it. All right, see what damage I do. Three hits. Okay. Mm, roll three dice, and we'll see how many of your men survive. Right, three dead. <laughs> now roll me a dice to see if it's your leader. Okay. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> it's not. But three men have died. So, nevertheless, you charge into close combat. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to remove the three here. So no shock. If I'd caused shock, that would have slowed them down. But it's it's not enough. These are wild men. Clearly, they're they're clearly Scots or Welsh or just or Irish. lunatics. I mean, really, but they're Scots, Welsh, or Irish because no sane Englishman would do this. No, I I, <laughs> I, uh, I uh, can possibly confirm that. Although I wouldn't like to in public. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, we have got leader. close combat. Uh, intriguingly, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hit me in the rear. I mean, this, this actually couldn't be worse for me on so many levels. So how many men have you got left there? Uh, not one. including the leader. Okay, not including the one, two, three, four, five, six. Six, right. So six men is six dice, nice and easy. Yep. Level two leader becomes eight dice. Right, um, no shock, so we don't worry about that. Uh, you're well, not took, aggressive. They took two shock with them, though. So oh, did they have shock? They had right, two shock, okay, yeah. fine. But it was one shock on each team, but yep. yeah, okay, so that takes a dice off. Okay. So we're up to eight, so we're down to seven. Yep. Uh, got any SMGs? No, you don't uh, have any no. SMGs. Too early in the war for you. 
Um, right, so there we are, that's it. So you've got seven dice. Mm -hmm. I have got one, two, three, four, five, six blokes. Okay, now uh, I get one d6 for each dice of movement that you use because that represents me having time to react the further yeah. you are away. So that becomes that three. nine. Yep. Uh, however, I'm not going to apply that because that is to represent me firing as you come in. I'm yep. not exactly showing you my rifle. <laughs> you've been you've um, been being shot yeah, at. Yeah, I've been. Tank that's or... right. So and I'm <coughs> tactical. So there's I'm not going to apply that. So I still get six dice. I've got no leaders. The leader had an SMG, which would be really handy now, but he, he's dead. So six dice, and uh, I've got an LMG which if I was pointing in your direction would get four dice, which is quite a lot, but yep. it's not. <laughs> so I'm down to six dice, and I've been hit in the rear, so I get three dice. So that's pretty abysmal for me. However, yeah. you roll, I'll, I'll roll my three because I want to give you a target to aim for. Fives and sixes kill, but sixes add shock as well. So I've just killed one of you. Okay. So roll your seven dice. Hmm, not so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I so, lost the guy doing so that. So I'm incumbent on the ground, hiding in terror, but I've still beaten you. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> right, excellent news. Well, the great news there, John, oh. is that... Um, the section's dead now, isn't you it? Are, yeah, you're <laughs> defeated by one, but you're stubborn. Mm -hmm. You're stubborn, so you ignore that, so we actually fight again immediately. Otherwise, you would have fallen back six inches. So you take one man off, I, I take did. no man off. Uh -huh. Now, I am no long, you're no longer hitting me in the rear, because I obviously have reacted, reacted to yeah. this. Yeah. So you've got five men, and the leader, level two, is seven, but down one for the shock so is six. six. Uh -huh. And I get one, two, three, four, five, six men. So I get six. Straight fight time. Yep. So I'll roll mine if you like. And I've killed three and added a point of shock. Awesome. Three and a point of shock. All right. So I'll put that shock on. Roll your dice. See if you can. Two. Oh, three. And a point of shock. <laughs> so roll the dice to see if your leader gets hit. All right. I don't have a leader to get hit, so I'll just take three men off. Five. He doesn't. Yeah. So you just take three men off. This is a vicious fight. This is turning into a truly vicious fight. So now, I have three men and two points of shot, <coughs> which is two dice. Yep. And you have... Two and a leader. Yeah. The two plus a leader is four. Down one for shock. So three. So you get three dice, I get two. And whatever happens, this is the last round. There are only three rounds as long as it goes. I kill one of you and add a point of shot. Yep. So I will... <laughs> <laughs> just just forget what I'm right. doing. <laughs> okay, roll the dice to see if it's your leader. Okay, uh, six. It's not. No. Nope. However, the good news is that you now have two blokes left and four points of shock. Double shock means you rout. Yep. So roll me 2d6 and add six, and that is how far you run, quite understandably. 13 <laughs> inches. So I suggest they run exactly back to where they started from yeah. and take all their shock with them. Um, now, as part of that, you don't actually take a morale test for losing a melee because, to be honest with you, there's so much other damage that you're going to be taking the test anyway. So you have lost a team yep. uh, as part of that. So roll me a d6, please, on the bad things happen table. Okay. Uh, the result is a three. three. Team wiped out one point off your false morale. You were actually lucky that you didn't lose a leader or anything like that. So yep. there we go. Uh, and I was fairly lucky that I managed to survive, but I'm definitely not tactical anymore. Um, <laughs> okay. Anything else? What else are you doing? Because you have still your phase. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> not with the same people. I don't think they'll be that keen. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, so my senior leader told them to... To do that. To do yeah. that. All oh, right, we're still part of your senior leader. So he's, he told them, have they, they, they haven't done they anything, haven't yet. Done anything no, yet. He's right. going to tell them now to <coughs> fire. Away. Right, so you've got two windows downstairs, that's yep. four riflemen, and you've got a Bren team upstairs, and that's six dice, so that's ten, but you haven't got two points of shock on the Bren. Yeah. So 
uh, that's um, whatever that maths makes. Nine dice. <laughs> Nine dice. Yeah. <laughs> we'll take these command dice out because you've still got them left. Yep. Right. Nine dice. Crap. <laughs> Truly crap. Truly. Two hits. Right. Yep. Okay. Time to roll for the machine gun team. Nothing. And the rifle team. Nothing. So good news there. For you, anyway. For me, yeah. yeah. So you've got a three and a two left still. On, yeah. on that, senior leader's got one point left. He might want to go in the house and start thinking about removing shock. It's up to you. Um, I no, yeah. no, he's, he's, he's fine. We're, we're just delaying here. You know, we know. Fair enough. The inevitable is on its way. <laughs> so Dunkirk is calling. Three, three and two. <laughs> um, Not a lot you can do with that. Uh, you could activate these guys. I could. Chuck a grenade. You could chuck. Uh, they've only got one grenade left. No, they haven't fired. Oh, they haven't used they grenades. Haven't used oh, no, yet, that's no. fine. I was telling you about it, wasn't I? Right, yeah. 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 So you could, you, their, their junior leader could tell them to chuck two grenades. Yeah, they're going to chuck a grenade. Right, we might probably finish that squad off. So roll two dice. Yep. So for the first one, you don't want to roll double one. And roll me two dice for the other one. You're just re literally posting it out the window. All that can happen is a fumble on the double two and you wouldn't roll that yep. oh no it was double one yeah fine right okay, so, <laughs> so we got four dice worth of grenades going off in the open and uh, ooh, three points of shock so um, uh, that is enough to pin those guys so mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll put a big marker big pinned marker next to them so we know they are literally quivering with fear in the corner they've just had a bunch of guys come screaming yeah. at them from behind while a tank is shooting at them and all of a sudden there's grenades. There's grenades going They're not off. having a good day. It's not a great day for them. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't like them. Right, okay. So I think that's you done. Yeah, I think right, so. Right, okay. So now, unleash. Right, two on my chain of command. I'm a bit frustrated about using that chain, having to use that chain of command ice to interrupt, but I reckon it was, it was that what won it. Um, so uh, we've got a six, which means the next phase is yours, and we've got that awful four and a one, which doesn't do me a great deal of luck. Uh, but what I will do is I'll bring that machine gun on, as I suggested. I thought having that deep position down here was going to be a good move. Am I within 24? I don't think I am. Can't be, can I? No, I'm just out, annoyingly. <laughs> um, so uh, nevertheless, I'm going to roll... It's normally 10 dice for tripod mounted machine gun, but this is some First World War antique they've got out of a, a museum in Stuttgart. Yep. So uh, I'm going to roll eight dice for them. Uh, and they're hitting on fives and sixes at that range. So that's three hits yep. on the guys. So you're probably going to put one on the Bren and two on the rifleman, I, I would guess. imagine, yep. So one on the Bren. Nothing. Nothing. And two on the rifleman. Two on the rifles. Nothing. Nothing. Frustrating. Frustrating, because what I could have done was fired suppressing fire, mm -hmm. which would have meant that when you were firing out, you were on a minus one to hit. And sometimes when you've got something at long range, it's not really going to do that, especially against something in heavy cover. The yep. best thing to do is to go, I'm just firing suppressing fire, and then just leave that on, spraying that building, and then that just reduces the enemy's firepower. Okay, well, that's uh, the one. Much good it did me. <laughs> uh, Magic Man here is actually going to use one command initiative to move behind the tank. <laughs> now, he can't tell the tank what to do. The tank is from a separate unit. Yep. Um, so the tank can only operate on its own. And much as I'd love to say fire at the Vickers, I can't. But he's going to use his second command initiative to get these guys to fire. And I'm going to practice what I preach. No, they're in close range, so I'm going to try and go for a kill on this. Okay. So six for the uh, antique light machine gun and six for the rifleman. Uh, it gives me 12 dice, and I'm hitting on fours, fives, and sixes. Ooh, that's a good roll. Mm. Eight hits. I like okay, that. Yeah. Not a lot, <laughs> but I do like it. Right, so roll me four on the Bren and four on the Rifleman, please, John. Four. Bren. <laughs> no effect. It's that hard cover that's spoiling my day. And rifles. I like that. Yeah, two dead. Two Roll dead. the dice to see if it's a leader. I like that a lot. It's not, 
Uh, so two riflemen. Nevertheless, I'm whittling them down. And the great thing about being a, a fourth wave German platoon, not that there are many great things about it, but one of the great things is I've got four squads. So I can afford to lose one in a ridiculous manner yep. and still have a pretty flexible force. Yep. Whereas John, who has also lost his in a ridiculous manner, can't <laughs> afford to do that. Because covering six foot frontage of table with two sections and a bit of support is tough yep. going. So I intend to exploit that in the most evil fashion. Um, now, so he's used two command initiatives. Yep. He could use a third to tell them to do something. So he's just going to say, move up and get out of the way. Yep. I don't need to roll the dice for that because there's only one inch. So there we are. That's me done, thanks to my rubbish command roll. Yeah. You'll go, sir. Right. Let's see what we can do now. Let's see if we can do something even more silly. Yeah. <laughs> Right, not a bad. whole lot of love there. Yeah. No, no, um, no, no single teams, but yeah. two senior leaders, two junior leaders, and a squad. Yep, gives you quite a bit to do. I'm going to activate the tank first. Yeah, I thought you might. Yeah, you really <laughs> want to. You really want to uh, clear them out, don't you? I want to. Another point of shock, and they're routing. So, because they are pinned, they count as being in light cover because yep. they're literally hugging the ground. So. It might be an idea to fire the um, HE at them, reduce it's, cover. It's if I actually want to kill them, because I'm, I'm still considering <laughs> this do something stupid tactic, which worked oh. so well before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I presumed you were going to do something sensible. How no. foolish of me. No, I'm, I've, I feel like taking this R35 and ramming it down the throat of this Panzer IV and going, you're going to have to deal with me now. Right, okay. <laughs> Okay, well, so, I know it will come off best. <laughs> yeah, but it would be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> no, do you know what? HA yeah. on the infantry. Yeah, well, it's it's a low-hanging fruit. If it you is. can get them to break, that's my force morale. So roll yep. me three dice for that. You're hitting on fours, fives, and sixes. Uh, gonna move this now, it's a single-man turret, so that means he can't do anything else. So you've got one hit. Yep. Let's see what the effect is there. Uh, the effect is a point of shock, which is sufficient to break me. So I roll 2d6 and add 6. So I go 12 directly away from you, ignoring all terrain. <laughs> right, brilliant. It's so we are, the building's about to collapse. On yeah. us. So they are now broken, so we'll take all this shock, pile it up next to them, and also put a second one of these markers to indicate that they're broken. Right. Uh, we are rolling for a squad breaking on the naughty things happen table. Yep. Troops breaking is actually the worst thing that can happen because seeing people die bravely sometimes apparently inspires these troops. Seeing people run off screaming merely upsets them. <laughs> right, okay, so here we are. The bad things happen table is uh, section breaks. What did I roll? A three, mm -hmm. two off my force morale. So pretty hefty bash there. Yeah. Um, right. Uh, tank did all right. That the tank did all right. It's a single man turret. So while that that tank commander is loading the gun and aiming, he can't do anything else. So his second command initiative is is lost. Yeah. I could just gun down the rest of them. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I think. Over here, because yep. I've got a senior. Yeah. The senior's going to tell them to start firing. To fire again. again, right? Fine. So you've got nine dice coming out of there, as yep. we know from last time. So we've used a three. Let's move that, and you've got the senior leader being used now. Yep. Okay. Not good bad. shooting. Not bad. Five hits. I make that. Yep. Uh, I'm going to put two on the machine gun team. One shock, and three on the rifle team which is a dead and a shock. Mm -hmm. Roll the dice to see if it's a leader. It's not. Dead and a shock and a shock. Right, okay, there we go. Okay. So, good shooting. Not bad. Uh. <clears throat> so he's got two more command initiatives. He could mm. do stuff if he so wished. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Do you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to move them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get them in range of these guys over here yeah, in the okay. garage. Right, so leaders can go 3d6. They don't pick up shock for it because okay. they're just too cool. So 3d6. Okay. Is nine. Yep. 
So no, it's going to be pretty close. Yeah, it'll be all right. <clears throat> it's going to be pretty close. Nine, you say? Yeah. Which gets him in amongst the there. remains of yeah. that other side. So sport. he could use his final pip to start rallying them, or he could shout to them. They're within nine. Yep. In ish. <laughs> but <laughs> playing among friends, what's a quarter of an inch? So you could activate them to do one thing. I'm going to tell them to run. Run. Okay, yeah. where are they running to? Uh, could it be an interesting one? <laughs> Could be an interesting it one. It could be. Mm. Uh, they're going to mm. actually run out the side of this building yeah. and start moving this way. Right, okay, fine. Right, well, if they go out the big door, they yep. don't have any reduction for movement. But going out that door, it will be because you can't get ten blokes through a door. <laughs> so probably running out the front door and moving yep. round is probably the quickest way. So you, you want to roll 3d6, they can do that because yep. there's a big barn door on the front of that garage. No impediment to movement. And that's uh, 10 inches. 10 inches, that's not bad. So you need a bendy old ruler there to... Yep, so I think, yeah, that's the camera we'll use. So 10, you mm -hmm. say? Yeah. I wonder if... Mm. If I just... <laughs> start throwing myself at the front of this Panzer IV, I don't think it'll be a good idea. <laughs> Screw it. Yeah. <laughs> no guts, no glory. There's going to be a lot of guts. Well, uh, probably not a lot of glory. So. More glory than glory, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. but uh, we shall see. It's going to be a lot of that. Everybody pile out. Everybody pile out. Let's, let's do something rash again. Okay, so we're doing something rash. Right. <laughs> well. Uh, good. Well done. Anything else to do? I think you're kind of done, aren't you? I think I'm kind of done, yeah. Right, okay, so... I'll take my command dice and uh, kill you. Uh, oh, two sixes, so I get the next phase. Uh -huh. So I've got a senior leader, a junior leader, and a team. So, with the team, I'm going to fire suppressive fire at that house. Yep. Because I don't think this machine gun chugging away in its first World War fashion is going to do much. However, with the three, my tank is going to fire its HE and then its machine guns yep. at you. That's fine. I expected you to do that. So, H-E away. Ha ah, ha! Well, only two hits, unfortunately. The shell obviously went sailing past. So, uh, But, I mean, it's in the open, so we might as well mix that up with the machine gun fire, which is another four hits. So that's six hits on you. I can't reduce cover any more than that, so it's just six hits in the open, please. Yep. Uh, but three on the Bren team and three on the rifle team. So Bren team uh, yeah, is one dead and two shock. Yep. Not so good. And rifles... Yep, one dead and one shock. Mm -hmm. So roll the dice to see if it's your leader. It's not. So let's take off one from the rifle team yep. and add that point of shock, and one from the Bren team. And can you add point of shock? Because I've used all my shock up <laughs> with all my men crying in the road. Right, so uh, that's that and uh, that. Okay. Now, what else am I going to do? So that's the three. Uh, the f on the four, that senior leader is going to get them to fire up at that house. So I've, I've lost a man there actually, so it's going to be six for the machine gun and four for the rifleman. But that's not a bad roll. That's Three, pretty good. four, five, six, seven. Do you know what? I've rolled better in this game than I have in a long time. <laughs> seven hits, so presumably four on the rifle yep. and three on the brand. So four rifle. <clears throat> not They're all right. And three on the brand. Three on the brand is Ooh. two shock. That's not bad. Yeah, that, that brand's in a pretty shoddy way now, isn't yeah. it? They've got four points of shock on them. But fortunately, if the brand team was on its own now, it would be pinned or yeah. uh, or even broken. But because the rest of the squad are there, they can share those uh, that shock between them. Yeah. Um, I've got a one. We've already done that. That's firing up there. I've got. I've still got a three. So I could activate somebody. In a way, what I'm inclined to do is bring on that other squad there and shoot you down. But the next phase is mine. Yep. So I'm just going to roll for the next phase now. All right. Um, okay, so that is a great roll because it allows me to activate loads of super stuff. Yep. Uh, the first of which, on a three, is going to be Magic Tank Man. Mm -hmm. uh, and he is going to fire his HE main gun and he's got three hits, and he's going to fire his machine guns. 
three hits, four hits, five hits, five hits in total. So okay. I'll put uh, three on the rifle team, please, right. and two on the Bren for a change, because I don't want to write. So one dead and two shock. So again, let me pinch some of those shock. Right. And how many on the Bren? Two, please. Two is one dead and that is the end of your Bren team I believe. Yeah I think so. Um, and uh, so uh, that's pretty nasty so roll me a d6 for a team being wiped out before we go any further no effect they're not worried about that apparently mm -hmm. uh, so we've used the main tank we're going to use the one to keep that machine gun firing uh, suppressive fire yep we're going to use the Two to get these guys firing again, um, which is ten dice. And that is, oh, pathetic. Three hits. Yep. So probably two on the rifles and two one on, on the brand. Rifles. Yeah. Is one dead and one shock. And roll for the brand yeah. is another All dead. dead. Ooh, you're getting to the point now where you've got to be in fair. Roll the dice to see if it's a leader. One or two, because there are two dead in there that time. Uh, yep. No, it's not. So one off them and one off them. Yep. And how many? And two more shock. How much shock have you got in total now? That's six shock in total now. And how many men? Uh, one, two, three, <laughs> five. Five. Right, so they are <clears throat> pinned. Yep which will put that in front there. So their fire effect is going to be much, much reduced by that. Yep. Uh, frustratingly, I would now like to... Okay, I'm going to... Act, put down another squad. Now, this is a bit risky but i really am just trying to push you over the edge with casualties so we've got we're in the open because i'm not i don't think your tanks that imp impressed me that much with no i would imagine it magnificent it's not impressed me much either. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another <clears throat> first world war light machine gun so six dice for that and six dice for the other guys i'm doing this on a three so the sergeant can add his submachine gun to uh -huh. it uh and we're gonna try and good lord mercilessly kill you that is so, rather impressive isn't it i'm yeah. gonna steal these dice <laughs> for a, 11 hits 11 you hits. haven't got a machine gun team no, so they're so all on that one all <laughs> rifles oh my lord right 11 you said yeah don't. i do i do say <laughs> This isn't going to go well, I don't think. Right, one, two dead and three points of shock. Roll the dice to see if it's the leader. It's not. No. Uh, two dead and three points of shock. Well, actually, can you add the three points of shock there? Yep. That will actually pin them. So they are hugging the pavement, weeping openly. Um, and that is the end of my phase. So your phase. <laughs> so I, I've kind of got you on the ropes here. I it's, need... it's what you can do to extricate yourself. Yeah, well, that's that's true. That's true. Um, what I'm pleased about is that you didn't run away actually, because otherwise your machine gun <laughs> might have been in a good position. But it as it is, blocking line of sight. Right, great. Especially as you rolled those ones. So. Mm -hmm. Uh. But I can activate a junior leader. You can activate a junior leader. And my senior leader is also able to activate and he's like really yeah. close as well so yeah so my senior is there mm -hmm. you could be shouting at them to do something uh, but they're pinned so they can't move mm. and if they fire they fire at half effect mm. <coughs> also good i'm i have a junior leader dice don't mm -hmm. i yeah excellent i'm going to activate the tank Okay, right. <laughs> right, okay, this was the bit that I was risking. So let's you've, see how well you do. You've so quite you, nicely lined yourself up. I know, here. it's a sort of parade of death, isn't it? Yeah. So what are you going to do? A machine gun, I presume. I would assume, yeah. A yeah, machine gun would be the well. best weapon for it. So six dice with your machine gun. Yep. Let's pop them out of there. So you're using a three. 
Let's see if we can actually harm you a little yeah. bit. Yeah, we can. Hell. Five hits. Yep. Right, three on the machine gun team, I presume. Mm -hmm. One dead, one shock. One dead. And one, I haven't got any shock counters anymore. And two on the one dead, one shock on the rifle team. But is it a leader? No, thank goodness. So that's thank you. Yeah, two points down, shot. That. That's right. So that uh, that hurts a bit, but mm. not not too terrible. So what else are you doing now? You've got a four, a two, and a one one. Well, four, two, and two ones actually. Uh, not very much I can do, to be honest. Hmm. Two inch mortar could come on to do a lot of good. Hmm. At the, at this point, mm. he's probably being told, "Just you stay back. This is, <laughs> this is going to go somewhere else." Yeah, very soon. yeah. Uh, can I try and rally these guys to get them uh, out of the way? Well, you've or? got a junior leader there, yeah. so he could take two points of shock. Yeah. But what you need is to reduce their shock and the turn to end, ah. uh, and then they will become unpinned. But it's probably you know you might as well start rallying them up because they're not going to do a lot without doing so. No. Uh, I'm going to have to forfeit the rest of the turn because I'm just mm. seeing very little I can do. Yeah, Everything's that's reduced the now problem is point. your force is much reduced, yep. isn't it? Right, okay. So I'll take my five dice and I've got two senior leaders, a junior leader and a two and a one. So with the one, I'm going to keep firing suppressing fire up at that window because I'm yep. really pleased with the way that's working out. Yep. Then uh, with the four, I'm going to get these guys to fire up at that window again, uh -huh. uh, on that house again, because yep, I, so again, yep. I'm really pleased with the job they're doing. Uh, and they get one, two, three, four hits. So uh, you've got two on the Bren, and who's only got one man left, and two on the rifle team. Yep. Oh, they're pinned, so they, but no, they're in hard cover anyway, so you can't get better than that. Bren. So nothing. And on the rifle team. Two on the rifle. Oh, we want them. Oh no, I'm just another kill's gonna kinda of tip that over the edge, I think. Yep. Um right, here we're gonna use two command points to use a German special action, which is called Handgranaten, the classic stormtrooper manoeuvre that they learnt from the First World War. They're gonna hurl grenades and charge in. Right, only one grenade crashes home, unfortunately, and that fails to do anything. Nevertheless, we now have three dice of a movement, which sees us storm in there in our uh, nasty manner. So, he's dead, isn't he? So I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven men, plus a junior leader becomes yep. nine. Uh, you have got uh, one, two, three men, plus a junior leader is five. Less shock. One, two, three, four, five, six is um, takes you down to two, and you're halved because you are pinned. So you have one dice, uh -huh. uh, but actually, so no, you don't because I've used three dice to move in. So that puts you up to two dice uh, against my nine. So I'll roll my nine. Yep, and uh, we'll see what damage we can do. So I've killed all of you. Yep, you have. Right, and roll your. Two dice, please, to see what damage you do back. If I kill two with this, mm. I'll be happy enough. Y yeah. So, go for it. And you do? Yeah. And do you hit a leader? Do I hit a leader? No. no. Right. So I killed two on the way out. You do, right. Okay, however, you've lost a uh, section. Yep. And you've lost a leader. So mm -hmm. let's take my two men off there. So, uh, roll me twice on the bad things happen table. So... The junior leader killed. Okay, junior leader killed. Three. Is one point off your force morale. Yep. And section wiped out. Six. Is two points off, so it's three points off your force morale in total. Yep. Right, okay, now your British regulars. Let's see if that affects your number of command dice. Uh, one of the things we've done in the, the new uh, book is that uh, troops c lose command dice at slightly different levels. You're down to four so yeah you'll be lo you'll only be rolling four command dice yep right however i've got loads more still to do you do one thing of which is to roll the tank forward with one dice and have a shot at you <laughs> so two dice to hit needing five 
I've hit, right, I've got an anti-tank strike of five, and you've got an armor of five. So I've done one, two, three penetrating shots. Okay. Can you roll me five dice for your armor to see how much of a bounce you can get? So All right. fives and sixes, please. What you need? Right, three. Three. Now, even Stevens, but that doesn't necessarily mean you get away scot-free. What mm -hmm. we do is we look at the armor damage table and roll me a d6, please. All right, uh, that is a four. Four. Now that means you will halt and engage me on your next time you activate because okay. you it's drawn your attention. Right, uh, finally, I am going to run these guys All because right. I want them to start moving around. So there we go. I'll roll, move 10 inches, you go. So you roll four command dice now. Okay. Uh, not the worst, but not great. So one, uh, that's a nothing. Yeah. That's one on your chain of command dice. So that takes your total up to four. four. So you've got a three and a two. Now you could activate your tank. I'm going to activate the tank. Okay, roll two dice, see if you hit. So we're getting into an armoured duel here at close range. Yep. Right, you do. So now you roll your three dice to penetrate to see whether you're going to penetrate my armour. Okay. <clears throat> Fives and sixes. Ooh, two hits. Yep. Right, I've only got four. I don't... Ooh, I failed to make any saves. So this could be a moment of glory for the French tank commander. Roll me a d6, please, John. Okay. That's a five. And you rolled a five. My hull MG is out of action, and I take two points of shock on my tank. That's pretty nasty for yeah, that. that's not bad. If I get four points of shock, I bail out. I'm yeah. gone. Right, okay, so that's your three. What else have you got? Uh, two. <laughs> <clears throat> You've got a section, though they're pinned. Yeah. You, you can't activate a leader. Yeah. Their firepower is going to be... Practically nil. Practically just a couple of dice. That's all you can do. Roll me two dice for their fire, and we'll see what effect that has, because that's all you can really do. No Nothing. effect. So, we will take my command dice now I'm scenting victory here so oh, <laughs> three on my chain of command dice great but not the role I wanted no just one team right I'm actually going to fire my machine gun to try and do some damage there yep. because another point of shock I reckon is going to tip you over the edge and you're going to be routing I think so and that that really would be game over so we've got three hits there yep so we'll put um Two on the rifle team and one on the Bren, please. Okay, so two on the rifles. Oh, two points of shock. This is exactly the effect I'm looking for. One and on one the on the Bren is nothing. But that means you've got one, two, three, four guys there with uh, already pinned. One, two, three, four. Right. They they break. Yep. So roll me 2d6. And frankly, I think with all your squads out of action, um, that's really going to be the point, right? So they're running back to the thing. Roll me they a are. d6 for a section on the bad things. Happen roll. Okay. And um, that's a six. Oh, please. That's two <laughs> that, points that off. So really, six. we're getting to the point now where you're only going to be rolling a couple of command dice. I don't think there's anything you can do to stop me, mate. No. No, this this is over. But heroic, though. Heroic. <laughs> I mean, a, a couple of bayonet charges. I think, um, you know, if I did capture your platoon commander, it wouldn't be a prisoner of war camp. It would be a lunatic asylum that we'd probably be sending him to. Yeah. But well done, mate. Nice. It was a brave, heroic it's, defense on the road to Dunkirk. It feels like a, a, a historical game because mm. I know I can do what I want to do here, mm. but I don't have as much freedom of movement that you do. Yeah. I don't have as much freedom of resources as you yeah. do. And uh, it's... <clears throat> It's been a hell of a game because mm. that's exactly pretty much what happened back then. So. And your unreliable ally actually stuck He's, it right out to the he end. Did. That's a brave friend. I think that guy's got to be getting the military cross. If uh, he makes it back after getting out yeah. of the tank to run. Yeah. 
Well, you know, he was on the verge, on the verge of defeating my Panzer IV. That was a bit of a David and Goliath moment, but great fun, great yeah. game, mate. Really enjoyed it. Absolutely. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, this has been John and Rich, and this has been Chain of Command. We'll see you again very soon. We hope you enjoyed this Let's Play. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.